نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد بسم الله سورة الحشر سورة الحشر اسم مدني سورة سورة نمبر 59 24 آيات و 3 ركود and the name uh, means gathering comes from the second آية where Allah سبحانه وتعالى mentions the first gathering of Jews of Medina another name for this سورة is سورة بنو نظير uh, since it describes the exile of بنو نظير tribe from Medina what is the connection of this surah with the previous surah, Surah Mujadala? Well, both surahs, Surah Mujadala and Surah Al-Hashr, describe those individuals who oppose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As it comes in the verses, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُحَادُّونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ In Surah Mujadala and Surah Al-Hashr, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ شَاقُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Then also, both surahs mention the victory of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over enemies. كتب الله لأغلبن أنا ورسلي فأتاهم الله من حيث لم يحتسبوا. A brief synopsis of the surah. So this surah outlines exile of Banu Nadir from Medina. It also describes rulings of distribution of property of faith. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises Muhajirin and Ansar for their exemplary character and sacrifices in the surah. And towards the end, many blessed and beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are mentioned. One of the virtues of this surah is it comes in a hadith in Tirmidhi. Man qala hina yusbihu thalatha marwatin a'udhu billahi s-sami'i min al-shaytan rajim wa qara'a thalatha ayatin min akhri surat al-hashr wakkal allahu bihi sabi'ina alfa malakin yusalluna alayhi hatta yumsi wa in mata fi thalika al-yawm mata shahidan wa man qala hina yumsi kana bitilka al-manzila. So whoever says three times when he gets up in the morning, and he recites three ayahs from the end of Surah Al-Hashr, onwards, Allah SWT appoints 70,000 angels who pray for his forgiveness until the evening. If he dies on that day, he dies a martyr. And whoever says it in the evening, he holds the same status, meaning the same protection and the same uh, promise comes for him until the next morning. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Sabbaha lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard wa huwa al-aziz al-hakim. Whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth glorifies Allah and He is the exalted in might, the wise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that everything that exists in the heavens and on the earth praises and glorifies Him. Everything prays to Him and affirms his oneness. As it also comes in Surah Isra, ayat number 44, So the seven heavens and the earth and whatever is in them glorify him. And there is not a thing except that it glorifies Allah by his praise, but you do not understand their way of glorification. Indeed, he is ever forbearing and forgiving. It is he who expelled the ones who disbelieved among the people of the scripture from their homes at the first gathering. You did not think they would leave, and they thought that their fortresses would protect them from Allah. But the decree of Allah came upon them from where they had not expected, and he cast terror into their hearts. So they destroyed their houses by their own hands in the hands of the believers, so take warning, O people of vision. Before we get into the tafsir of this ayah, we need to understand the background um, of revelation of this surah, and it will help us understand the meaning of this ayah and the upcoming ayahs in a better way. Upon migration to Medina, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made a peace treaty with Jewish tribes of the area, namely Banu Nadir, Banu Qanqa, and Banu Qurayza. So one of the conditions of this treaty was 
to contribute funds towards any blood money needed by any party. What is blood money? It is the money given to someone to compensate for a murdered person. So if a person from one of the tribes was killed, then the tribe of the killer, along with allies, will have to raise blood money to compensate the tribe of the murdered person. In fourth Hijri, some hypocrites and non-believers requested Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to send a few companions to teach them Islam. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent 70 companions who were well known for their Qur'an and teaching Qur'an. This group of Sahaba stayed at a place called Bay Ma'una, inviting people to Islam, but they were all killed. So this was a trap. So they were all killed except one Sahabi by the name of Amr bin Umayyah al damuri When this Sahabi, Amr bin Umayyah, was returning to Medina, he came across two non-believers and he ended up killing them. And these two people who he killed them, they were from a tribe named Banu Amir. And that Banu Amir was an ally of Banu Nadir. So in summary, a Sahabi uh, who was from the tribe of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from the companions, killed one of the members or two members of another tribe, Banu Amir, and that tribe was ally was an ally of Banu Nadir. So because of this connection and because of the treaty, now Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had to give blood money uh, for these two murdered people. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gathered money from Muslims and then he also reached out to Banu Nadir, uh, Banu Nadir so they could contribute their portion of blood money. But instead of sharing their portion, they plotted to kill Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They asked Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to rest against a wall while they go and get the money. But their plan was to have someone climb the wall from behind and drop a rock on Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to kill him. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed this conspiracy to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he instantly left and upon returning to Medina, sent a notice of breach to Banu Nadir. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked them to evacuate the town in 10 days, otherwise they will be killed upon sight. Banu Nadir had their fortresses outside of Medina, about three kilometers away. So they decided to lock themselves uh, in the fortresses. And they were even given some promises by hypocrites. If you fight against Muslims, then we will support you. But that support never came. And they ended up uh, surrendering to the Muslims and opening the doors of the fortresses. So finally, when that happened and Muslims got control of the area without any fight, Banu Nadir was ordered to evacuate and take whatever items they could on their camels except arms and weapons. So they couldn't take arms and weapons, but whatever from their wealth they wanted to take, they could load them onto the camels and their rides and, and leave the area. So this is how Jews were expelled from Medina in the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they went to areas like Khaybar and Syria at that time. Interestingly, the person who took the, the job of throwing the rock on Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his name was Umar bin Jahash, he took Shahada along with one of his uncles. So everyone except these two people, Umar bin Jahash and his uncle, uh, were exiled from, uh, from Medina. And this is considered the first exile. Later on in the Umar, in the time of Umar al-Tala'anu, Jews were expelled out of Ibn Khaybar and they settled in Syria and Iraq as part of the second exile of Jews. So this is the backdrop. And when we come back to the ayah, now we will understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining here in these ayahs. So first, the word hashr. Hashr means gathering. And it is called the first gathering because Jews were settled at one place for a long time. Um, and this event of exile of Banu Nadir was the first time that they were expelled. Allah came upon them from where they had not expected. So again, it does not mean Allah SWT came physically. It means the command or the decree of Allah SWT came. They destroyed their houses by their own hands in the hands of believers. A question comes to mind, why did they destroy their own houses? 
So when Muslims conquered the fortresses of Bunu Nadir, I mean, they were given 10 days to leave and take whatever they could except arms and weapons. So what did they do? They actually took even parts of their houses. So they, they broke the beams of the houses, doors, shutters, and loaded them onto their uh, camels and, and left. So they, in fact, damaged their houses in the greed of taking whatever they could with themselves. And so that's one part of the ayah. The other part about Muslims damaging their property, well, this happened when Muslims were surrounding the fortresses and they were trying to uh, make the Jews surrender. So some of the companions actually burnt trees um, and this was to incite uh, a fear among Jews. So that's what meant by the damage done by Mu'minin to the properties of Jews. وَلَوْلَا أَنْ كَتَبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْجَلَاءَ لَعَذَّبَهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَلَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابُ النَّارِ And if not that Allah had decreed for them evacuation, He would have punished them in this world, and for them in the hereafter is the punishment of the fire. So the word al-jala means al-khuruj min al-watn, exile from the land. ذلك بأنهم شاقوا الله ورسوله ومن يشاق الله فإن فإن الله شديد العقاب. That is because they oppose Allah and His Messenger, and whoever opposes Allah, then indeed Allah is severe in penalty. شاقوا mean disobeyed, opposed. ما قطعتم من لينة أو تركتموها قائمة على أصولها فبإذن الله وليخزي الفاسقين. Whatever you have cut down of their palm trees or left standing on their trunks, it was by the permission of Allah, and so He would disgrace the defiantly disobedient. The word لينة means palm trees, and some say that it means all types of palm trees except the ajwa tree. This ayat is referring to a difference of opinion among Sahaba, whether palm trees should have been burnt or not around the uh, property of Jews. So when Banu Nadir locked themselves up, some Sahaba cut down and burnt palm trees. Others tried to um, keep those palm trees and not damage any property. And the difference was, both were trying to, of course, uh, conquer the land, but the Sahaba that cut down the trees, they were trying to instill terror in Banu Nadir, versus the other companions, they were of the opinion that very soon this land would be um, given to Muslims as, as booties. So upon victory, Sahaba who had damaged the trees felt guilty and asked Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whether they had committed a sin. Al-Swant revealed this ayah on that occasion to their acquittal and comfort. That whatever was done to teach a lesson to Banu Nadir, whether to cut trees or leave them, was done with the permission of Allah SWT. So Sahaba should not feel guilty or get blamed. We see an important principle derived from this ayah. That differences of opinion based on those who are qualified to do ijtihad is acceptable. One group of Sahaba considered cutting trees permissible and the other group impermissible. However, none of these options were considered sinful by Allah Let's quickly review Ayat 1 to 5. So we learn everything in the heavens and the earth glorifies Allah We also learned about the exile of Banu Nadir from Medina due to breaching the peace treaty with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because they tried to, instead of giving the blood money, the other portion of the blood money, uh, they plotted to kill him. And also the fact that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala pardons the mistake of a sincere mujtahid. So when you have differences of opinion among mujtahids, and they were doing their best effort, their sincere effort to get to the right ruling, if there is one of the parties on mistake, he will still be pardoning that party. <laughs> Rabbana